Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting experiment that manages to prove a really old theory about black holes and how you can technically create more energy than you introduce into the black hole. In other words, it's an experimental proof that if you were to introduce just the right amount of energy into a black hole, you can actually get more energy back. So let's talk about this very peculiar idea and welcome to What The Math. Black holes are really strange. Whatever happens around them is very counterintuitive and a lot of things that go on very very close to black holes just make no sense. For example, let me show you a very simple and somewhat counterintuitive experiment that shows you how weird black holes can be. Here's a black hole that's about 100 masses of the sun and here is a random star in its orbit. Using our current understanding of orbital mechanics and I guess using our understanding from the solar system, we would assume the star to be orbiting in this way. Now, eventually it obviously starts falling apart because of the tidal interactions, but it will still maintain a kind of a circular or maybe elliptical orbit, at least based on the classical physics, based on Newtonian physics. But then Einstein came along and kind of redefined our understanding of what happens around black holes and other scientists made this even more complex. One of these scientists is the wonderful Roger Penrose, who's proposed quite a lot of ideas, but specifically in 1969, he explained how certain black holes, the ones that spin really fast, can actually start producing other effects. This black hole is not spinning, but as it starts spinning, it acquires very different formation of what's known as ergosphere, and this ergosphere really makes things super difficult. So here is what an orbit, this kind of an orbit, would look like around a black hole that's spinning very fast and has a very large ergosphere. This orbit, as you'll see in a few seconds, will make no sense. Like nothing is actually pushing or pulling on the star, or whatever the subject is, it's supposed to be orbiting just in regular circular motion, but it doesn't do that. It kind of creates these very chaotic motions around the black hole that's spinning, and um, without actual complex mathematics, it's very very difficult to explain and understand. But that's the reality of a spinning black hole. It produces orbits that kind of make no sense. And a lot of this is due to the effect known as frame dragging. So essentially when a black hole, a very massive black hole, starts spinning really fast, it starts also dragging the actual space-time around it that you can kind of see as this gray circle or ring around the black hole, and this frame dragging will essentially turn the object that's technically not moving into a naturally moving object. In other words, it will provide motion to things that are not even moving. Moreover, turns out that if you were to enter ergosphere, you cannot actually stay still. Even if you try to move against the flow at the speed of light, you will still be moving. The nature of ergosphere makes everything inside of it have motion, and it has a lot of other really unusual effects. Like for example, one of the directions of space will actually get flipped with the direction of time, and theoretically at least, mathematically according to Penrose, you can even have negative energy because of this flip. In other words, certain objects can have negative energy and negative mass. And because of this idea, back in 1969, he proposed this very interesting, very kind of a cool phenomenon that if you were to hypothetically throw something into the ergosphere of a spinning black hole, so essentially if you were to throw something right here-ish, and then somehow this object would separate into two objects, with one falling into the black hole, and one escaping the ergosphere, the one that now escapes the ergosphere will actually have more energy than when the original object came in. Long story short, by throwing something into the ergosphere and by then having it leave ergosphere, you will have object coming out with more energy than coming in. And this is due to the actual spin of the black hole and the energy itself comes from the angular momentum of the black hole, so it's not actually created out of nowhere. Essentially, the object that now leaves the ergosphere takes a little bit of that angular momentum and turns it into the actual energy that then makes it more energetic than uh, when it came in. The mathematics behind it is actually really, really brilliant, and the calculations suggest that you can leave with about 20 to maybe 21% more mass and more energy than you came in. And this creates a very interesting idea of possibly these super advanced type 3 civilizations being able to create infinite energy using rotating black holes. But this is obviously all theoretical at this point, and we don't really know if it's even physically possible, because there could be other effects that we're not really taking into consideration. 
And then a few years later, after the Penrose proposal, this wonderful person from the Soviet Union, Yakov Zeldovich, who actually has a lot of things named after him, mostly because he was not just a physicist, but he was also a chemist, he was also a nuclear physicist, he also uh, was responsible for creating a nuclear bomb in the Soviet Union. So he was a very brilliant man and has a lot of different phenomena named after him. But one thing that he proposed was that we could technically turn this whole black hole thing into a physical phenomenon and then apply it here on Earth. The idea was as follows, and this is actually from a brilliant presentation by this wonderful person on the super radiance in analog black holes. So essentially, if you were, instead of a black hole, have a very, very fast spinning cylinder, and if you were to then shine a light of a very specific frequency at it, so that the frequency of light is actually aligned with the spinning cylinder, you could then produce very similar effects that he refers to as super radiance. Or in other words, you could make light have more amplitude or more energy than before it hit the cylinder, thus producing energy from the spin of the cylinder itself. But in order for this to work, the light itself has to have momentum to begin with. In other words, it has to come in spinning already. And this is the effect we can easily recreate here on Earth, and it's been investigated many, many times. But even though we can create the light that spins, that has momentum, it's very difficult for us to create the cylinder that spins that fast. It will have to spin several million or possibly even billion times per second. Right now, it's kind of beyond our capabilities. And so the only way that the scientists have previously been able to kind of prove this super radiance is by using water and water waves. So essentially by having constant waves coming this way and then having an actual vortex that represented a black hole in the middle, there were certain phenomena showing that you can produce the super radiance inside water waves, thus allowing for a wave that leaves the vortex to have slightly more energy. But now there's an even better experiment that finally proves all of this as a fact. And this experiment doesn't use water, it doesn't use light, it uses audio waves. The experiment and the paper that you can find in the description below does something a little bit different, but using very similar principles that were originally proposed by Penrose and were then clarified by Zeldovich. To solve the problem of a fast spinning cylinder, they decided to use sound waves of about 60 Hz, so the cylinder only had to be spinning 60 times per second, relatively easy to achieve. And then to create the actual momentum of the spinning wave, they arranged the speakers in a circle like you see in the picture right here, thus creating a wave that had momentum that would then strike the cylinder and hypothetically would then leave the cylinder or bounce off the cylinder with more amplitude and more energy. That's the theory. But did it work? Well, not only did it work well, but it was very consistent with the original theories as well. The amplitude was about 30% higher than the original wave, thus confidently proving the idea behind the Penrose and uh, Zeldovich's propositions that not only can you create energies by shining a light on cylinders, but you can also create more energy by throwing mass into a fastly spinning black hole. All of this allow the scientists to show that you can convert energy of spinning body or basically angular energy into other types of energy that can then be more technically used for other means. And although right now this doesn't really have that much practical application yet, it's a huge step forward. It means that by using a spinning object, by using some other naturally spinning object somewhere out there, we can then convert one type of energy into other type of energy. And not just convert it, receive more than we gave in at least 30% more as a matter of fact. So this could one day serve as a kind of a relatively easy way for us to produce energy from some other source that we discover somewhere else in the universe. Now obviously ultimately this would be spinning black holes, spinning neutron stars, other spinning massive and compact objects, but right now we can't really do that because we don't have the capability of getting there. However, we might be able to use this for other spinning objects as well. Some other objects that are also spinning, somewhere here in the vicinity of planet Earth and the solar system, but that we just haven't really thought about using for energy sources. In other words, this once again shows us how all of this theoretical black hole stuff can technically be used for other means as well. We're discovering so much more about the universe, about energy, about physics, and about the world around us by just studying these very unusual theoretical objects that we never really thought about. And by the way, because of the propositions from Penrose and from Zelkovich, only a few years later, in 1974, Stephen Hawking was able to show that black holes can thus lose mass and evaporate. This is the ideas behind the so-called Hawking radiation. 
And although it's still sort of kind of theoretical, we do think that one day we'll be able to use it for actual creation of energy somewhere here on Earth as well. We don't really know how yet, but it's going to happen. Just like it did with previous discoveries of, for example, atomic energy, that at first many people thought was very theoretical as well. Eventually, we found a way to use it physically. But on that note, well, looks like that star that I originally placed in the beginning of the video has now become something more akin to a typical ring or a typical accretion disk around a black hole. Although, once again, this is not really what any of this would look like in real life, because the black holes do create unusual orbits. But on that note, that's kind of it. It's a really cool experiment that connects the world of black holes with the physical world we live in and finally shows us how we can convert certain types of energy. At the same time, it takes us just a step closer to the ability of humans to manipulate this kind of matter and possibly one day create energy from these unusual objects as well. But on that note, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. And it does have a black hole, a spinning black hole in the center. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.